Okay, I'm gonna start this video off with a prayer um, so that the Lord, our God, can guide us, guide me in telling you guys this testimony. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing me to this moment, Lord God, to finally share my testimony. Father God, I thank you for bringing the ones who come to this video today, Lord God, to have their ears. I pray that you have their ears open, Father God, their hearts open so that they can receive this message for where they, wherever they are in their journey right now, Lord God. I pray that this message can set them free, Father God, so that they can be um, aware, Lord God, of the dangers of ignorance, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for being our, um, our guide, our guide, Lord God, our redeemer, Father God. I thank you so much, Lord God, for continuing to guide us through your righteous path, Father God, allowing us to continue to walk in safety, Father God, and not be trapped, Lord God, by the snare of the fowler. Lord God, um, we, I rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus, for if he tries to penetrate through any minds or hearts or lost souls, Father God, I ask that you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I ask that you will continue to be with us, Father God, guiding us to your light, Father God, for you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord God. And we ask that you will continue to um, guide us with your Holy Spirit that lives with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hi, you guys. Um, thank you for watching this video today. Um, I <laughs> been was supposed to make this video, but I, for some reason, I just been all over the place. And God finally was like, this is what I need you to do. Do it. So I'm going to do it. Um, for a while now, I have been um, reborn. Um, I fell off my track with Jesus. Though Jesus never left me, I completely abandoned Jesus, abandoned Jesus. And um, today I'm telling you guys my story. Um, first of all, um, we will start with how I started to fall off. Well, I had been raised in the church um, for a very long time and um i used to sing in the church i used to do what do you call it i used to do um easter easter um what do you call it i used to do easter speeches like i used to praise dance i did everything i was a part of the church i knew who jesus was but i didn't understand what it meant to have a relationship with christ um so um when i got older um a lot of things started to happen in my life. Um, my situation living at home wasn't the best. Um, though I was encouraged to be in church every Sunday faithfully, um, my household did not really, um, I don't feel like I was being led by a figure who was able to show me what it meant to live by Christ um and that happens a lot to a lot of people who have grown up in churches you know you're you're given the gospel but the examples around you are not a good implication of how to live by Christ and so you can just imagine I knew who Jesus was but did I really know how to live by his, his word how to understand his word how to fellowship you know no I didn't so um it really all started by um relationships I had to learn um the hard way um through my relationships in my life so my very first relationship I um, I made a commitment that I wasn't going to give my body away, but I ended up doing just that. And I just want to say for the ones who are watching right now, um, please do not engage in anything sexual until you, until you are married. Um, sex, I feel, played a huge part in the spiraling of my downfall um sex is very spiritual and if you have not 
went about sex in a way where you are establishing a covenant with God between the person that you commit yourself to by marriage, um, you are putting yourself in danger spiritually. Um, please learn it from me. Um, I feel like that's one of the main reasons why um, spiritually I started to lose control. Um, I went from having this particular person that I was dating at the time, bringing him to church with me, to allowing him to talk me into giving up my morals and also my beliefs. Um, so as this relationship continued, I um, started to look at Jesus differently. Um, a lot of people who are um, African-American, they um, are starting to um, question Christianity. Um, they're starting to question, um, is Jesus even real? Um, they're starting to question, you know, if our ancestors were forced to read the Bible, then how, how genuine is this religion? Um, so my particular um, boyfriend at the time, this was his mindset. Um, and we ended up engaging in theories that further pushed the narrative that Jesus is black and you know just different things um hebrew israelites and even going far back as to learning different religions um you know a lot of african americans are starting to go back to the egyptian influence um you know um a lot of the egyptian a lot of the Egyptian concepts, I feel like for some reason, African-Americans are really starting to latch on to that idea out of pride. And at that time, that's how I felt. Um, I became more prideful about who I was because of my skin. And I say this all to say, when you get caught up in your flesh, you start to abandon the spirit um the holy spirit you know especially if you had um dedicated your life to christ because many times as a kid i got saved i was even baptized in middle school so for me to go to that to now second guessing what i have committed myself to over the years um spiritually i started to become lost so uh, for a while i was all about um learning the truth about jesus who is jesus is his name even jesus you know people would throw at you the documentaries i started to look up they would throw at you you know his name couldn't be jesus because back then there wasn't even uh, the word there wasn't even letters like j and stuff like that and that made me think well wow i've been lied to this entire time like i'm just taking what everyone is putting in front of me and making that my argument as to why I don't even believe in Christianity anymore. It was just a setup. It was just a way to keep us bound. And that's how my mentality went. So, um, yes. So after that, um, I kind of just started to claim that I was spiritual um, I started claiming that I was spiritual, that I believed in God, but I didn't believe in Jesus. And um, I just kind of always kept an open mind because I was like, well, you know, Christianity ain't it. What about the rest of the religions? What about Hinduism? What about Buddhism? What about, you know, um, just everything else, everything else but Christianity. So at this time with this particular person, and this is why I say, please watch who you give your body to, who you give your mind to, who, it don't matter. If it's not Jesus, don't surrender your morals. Don't surrender your mind. Don't surrender your spirit. Please don't, okay? It's very, very dangerous spiritually. Um, this person um, influenced me to partake in things that weren't so, um, weren't so pleasing to my body. I started to smoke a lot of weed. Um, weed is not something that you should indulge in. Honestly, if it's up to me, I'd stay away from it. Um, 
Jesus wants us to keep a sober mind. He does not want us to be drunk. He does not want us to be high. He wants us to stay focused on him. So if you are a weed a weed indulger or you indulge in alcohol, please think about, and, and you are with Christ, please think about the fact that the Holy Spirit is with you, but how can you stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit if you are consuming your body with toxins and you are altering your mind state to the point where he's no longer focused? Um, think about if that is pleasing to him. So getting back to the story, I was smoking a lot of weed and um, we started to turn into other drugs. Um, and it wasn't only this person, but um, once I started smoking a lot of weed, more of the people who I became engaged with smoked weed and then they would be interested in other things. So um, I ended up trying LSD. Also, I wanna say before I get on this topic, music is very, very dangerous. You guys, I'm starting to realize me sharing this testimony is really, really, really spiritual. Um, there's a lot of things that God revealed to me spiritually. There's a lot of things. Um, like we said, we start with sex, drugs, music. These three things is, is something that took a huge part in me falling off so quickly into spiritual darkness. So, um, yes, I actually will never forget. Um, this is before I get to the LSD part, but I used to be a huge, huge fan of Janae Aiko. And, um, you know, I used to love her voice so, so much. And so I dug into who she was and what she practices. And um, she's... Um, she she's follow she follows idols. It is not Jesus, you know. And she um believes in meditation. She believes in mantras. She believes in energy. You know, the spiritual things, new age things. And because I was so lost and I reached so many points in my life, I clung to her. I clung to her music because I felt I could relate to her music. When I clung to her music, I clung to the things that she did. Um, please realize music um, consists of spirits. If you didn't know, now you know. Music consists of spirits. Um, there is a reason why in the Bible, God urges us to sing praises to him play music for him to worship him with the instruments that we that he has you know um because if it is not worshiping god it is of it is of wickedness and spirits attach to whatever your mind is consumed whatever can consume your mind spirits attach to it um so I feel like a lot of the music that I listened to, a lot of the weed I was smoking, the sex that I was indulging in, these were ways that I was inviting spirits into my life, very dark, wicked spirits. So with that being said, I had a lot of friends at the time and um, they, I had this one particular friend who knew someone um, who sold LSD and like I said, I used to be a fan of Janae Aiko and I remember her. Um, it was this one song. It was an album pretty much um, reflecting on the fact that she took a trip with LSD and shrooms. And for some reason, it made me want to try it. Um, so spiritually, let's just look at it in a sense that there were spirits in her music that I listened to every single day. I meditated to it. I did all that to it. It got to the point where there were spirits that jumped on me and pretty much persuaded me to 
try this try it you know let's see what it you're gonna see things you're gonna you know this is what my mind is telling me i want to do so i end up trying it and when i tried it um i feel like i entered another realm when i say this Please be mindful, at this point, I've abandoned Jesus. At this point, I have abandoned Jesus, okay? Now that I'm back with Jesus, now that he's opened my eyes, I was in a realm where I could see the spirits. And at that time, I didn't know what it was. At that time, I thought it was hallucinations. And I thought that, you know, um, this is just how the drug works, but I definitely entered something that I didn't know I was witnessing um, darkness. And so I did this this one time and I did it again. Second time I did it, I did it with the ex, the boyfriend at the time who I told you kind of got me spiraling into darkness. When I tried it with him, I saw demons. And I, at that time, I did not know they were demons, but they were demons. So after that, um, I thought I was gonna die when I saw them. And so I said, all right, then. That's when I started looking at a lot of stuff differently not spiritually, but I was just like, you know, if I'm sitting here engaging in sex with this person, I'm letting him consume my time, my energy, all that. Just imagine how those very things can hop on me. I break up with him. Um, and then I tried shroom shortly afterwards, same, same perception. So I tried LSD about three times and I tried shrooms about once. And every time I tried these things, I saw the same perception. But anytime I would discuss it with the people I tried it with, they weren't seeing what I was seeing. So I definitely feel like God gave me, um, God gave me sight to see this, even though I did not know how deep in darkness I was, how in trouble I was, God was giving me these these perceptions because I can now establish what I had saw. So, and I can share it with you guys now. So yes, I was seeing spirits. And um, after that, I ended up um, jumping from that ex to another guy. This is going to be the start of how I got into new age. Um, well, this particular person I also got involved with sexually, red flag number one. And um, something about this person was just, I'm not gonna say this person was demonic, but this soul tie was very demonic because it was a it was a connection where I felt like I was stuck with it. You know, once I gave myself up to this person, I felt like this is just someone I just need. And I'd never had that type of feeling before. And so um this type particular person, we would engage in sex. And then afterwards, he, like, I would be left feeling like crap, like he didn't care about me. And so I was just like, okay, well, I didn't know what to do. So you know what I did? I started to get into zodiacs and astrology. I started to look up my sign and look up his sign, see how we're compatible, you know? Then it went into um, horoscopes. 
I wanted to keep up with the horoscopes. I wanted to keep up knowing, you know, well, will me and this person get together? You know, what, what does it say is going to happen tomorrow? What about the next week? You know, this is when I really started to spiral into new age and, and, and um, tarot. So once I realized the horoscopes weren't giving me enough information, I'm not sure how I, I found into this, but um, I went on YouTube and I started watching tarot readings. There would be tarot readings that were specifically made for my zodiac. And I would be like, oh, you know, Leo um, month of May, um, prediction and I would click it and people would use their cards to tell your future as this as this person is periodically hitting me up getting me to come over have sex with them I leave and then go on ghost I in this moment I am like well what am I gonna do and as I'm going to the tarot readings they're telling me things like oh, this person is lying or this person is, they would give me so many answers, but nothing felt good enough for me to just leave. Like I always felt like, it's like they would always include something to be like, but this person is going to come back or this situation isn't over. And just telling me things to keep me involved with this person. So I can remember that entire summer, I just was on tarot readings because I didn't know how else to accept the fact that this person was evil and not this person was evil but this situation was created for my downfall it was created for my destruction but because I was having these sexual encounters with this person and I do believe that I got into a soul tie with this person um thank you Jesus for saving me and freeing me from this situation but um yes um I was stuck and so um I started getting into meditations and um, as the tarot readers would say things, they would burn their sage and stuff. And so I started getting sage. Um, I would notice that they would wear little, um, they would use little crystals and stuff like that to charge and influencing us on what to do in order to attract our love and stuff. So here I am going to stores like Earthbound and going online on Google, ordering bracelets to wear, like I'm getting all into witchcraft did not know at the at the time but that's what it was it was witchcraft so i ended up getting all these things and um you know still wondering you know um when is this person and me gonna be together when you know and so um so i ended up ordering my own tarot deck and once me and this person stopped talking to each other, I started, I kept watching tarot, but I started getting to other things. And these other things were like tarot readings about my past life. You know, cause when, when they would tell me about this person that I was so stuck on, they would reveal to me how we had a past life together and stuff. So it made me more curious. It made me think, okay, well, what was my purpose in my past life? Because all my life, I've had a very hard time knowing what do I want to do with my life? because I had people telling me what I should do, but I didn't feel it in my heart that that's what I needed to do. So, you know, as I'm trying to look for this lover who I'm supposed to be with for the rest of my life, I'm also asking myself, what is my purpose here? And so I would watch tarot readings that would tell me, you know, you were a man in a past life and you were trying to do this, but you died and blah, blah, blah. And um, then it started getting weirder. And that's when they started telling me there were certain tarot readings that would tell you about your spirit gods. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, if I, if I, um, you know, if I got spirit gods, I want to know who they are. And so I would watch tarot readings about that, about who my spirit gods were. And they would tell me, oh, you have a spirit god, um, y'all, it's just crazy stuff. Like, I'm telling y'all this now, but like, it was super duper like 
looking back at it, it was nonsense. It was lies. It was nonsense. The devil really had me fooled out here. Um, that, they were talking about spirit guides and and um, that my spirit guides were... It's like I can't even remember. I feel like God has like cleared my memory of this stuff because it was nonsense. But I do remember that it got to a point where I felt like I was a part of the earth. Like, like, and I'm trying, I'm giving y'all this explanation so that y'all can understand how it just went downhill, downhill, downhill. Like, it doesn't go from you being like, oh, I don't believe in Jesus, but I do believe in, in spirit. Like, I believe in, 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 um, I don't know. Like, it, it was not a fast, it's not a fast transition. It's like, if somebody were to tell me after I, I denounced believing in Jesus, if somebody would have told told me, oh, you can try witchcraft, I was like, no, like, witchcraft? Like, no, like, I something about that is evil, it's demonic, you know, I would have I even said that at that time, but I'm trying to give y'all an example of how it can start from something so, and we can say it's little, but simply, simply denying Christ is not little. It's not little at all because when you deny the only truth that's out here, the only way to, to everlasting life, when you deny that, you are going to fall for anything. And it doesn't have to be what you think is right or wrong. You can just get led into it and not even know. The devil is a liar, okay? Do not let the devil lie to you. You need Jesus in your life to keep you focused and keep you knowing the truth and the answer and the way because he had me lost. At a certain point, I started to feel like I was a part of the earth. I started to feel like I was a part of the earth. Like I could start sensing birds. Like I could, I could, like, like I was starting to believe that birds were my spirit guides. And I'm looking like this because it's like, You know what I'm saying? But like, no, I really did. And it's scary because like I was so lost. And so I had a lot of encounters. There was this one, one time I, okay, after I did LSD those multiple times, when I would smoke weed again, I would have flare ups where those type of perceptions would come back. And when I had these perceptions come back, it would be like I'm on LSD again, and I didn't like it. It was a very paranoid feeling. Like my my smoking weed started to turn very paranoid, par paranoid. I don't know if that's the word. So I remember this one time, it happened, and I was alone at at home. I was alone, and I decided to go outside. And as I was walking outside, and I turned around, I looked up. And I looked on the top of this house and there was a bird. It was a raven. And I looked at this raven and it had this glow around it. And it had this song coming from it. It wasn't a song of, it was like a, a, a instrumental of some sort, but it was a song and I just thought it was very strange that this bird was making music. And so when I saw that, I just kind of kept walking. And then um, I remember going in my room and it's like I, it was like I could see the spirits around me, but I couldn't really see them. Like they were there and I felt like they were staring at me like, what is she going to do? That's the type of feeling I was getting. But it's like I had to keep myself distracted so that I wouldn't feel too scared about it. Like, guys, please don't indulge in this world. Do not get comfortable doing things of this world. It is not safe. It is going to lead you to your death, okay? Please hear me right now. Please hear me. It is going to lead you to your death, okay? God saved me. And God saved me so that I could come and tell y'all my testimony. Cause for the longest I hadn't I hadn't I hadn't planned on doing it because it's been a while and I just been trying to let it go. But no, this is something that needs to be told. 
demons are real the devil is real jesus is real god jesus jesus is god god is jesus and and he's real please y'all please give your life to god give your life to christ get protected get spiritually protected in the name of jesus let him cover you and wash you away with his blood please because you can be so lost you can be so in darkness you can be surrounded by evil spirits who are just waiting to snatch your soul so that you cannot be saved <sighs> there would be times there would be times that i was smoking weed and if I got so so high, I would be I would I, I it was to a point where I would smoke and I'd get paranoid instantly. And there would be times that something would come over my shoulder and make a noise. And I would get scared. Cause I'm like, what is that? You know, it was it wasn't a good feeling at all. It was kind of like the devil was just over my shoulder, waiting to consume me in fear, waiting to 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 devour me. Like the, it, it was it wasn't a good feeling. There was a time where I was outside, and this is something I really didn't want to speak about, but I'm gonna speak about it because I feel like now is the time for me to come out about my spiritual experiences um so that you guys know spiritual darkness is out here and if you are not saved by the holy spirit if you are not saved by jesus himself you are out here and you are going to get consumed in ignorance guys it was this time i went outside and i was drawing and at this point um i went outside and I was looking at the clouds and I was drawing, just drawing whatever I felt I, need, I needed to draw. Like I was pretty much looking at the clouds and outline, outlining what the clouds were showing me. Very, very weird. And I feel like there were demons out there encouraging me to draw because this picture ended up turning into these pic this picture of these two birds. Like I told y'all, I had got to the point where I felt like birds were my spirit guides. So I'm thinking, oh, these are my spirit guides. Guys, I'll never forget this day. I was outside and I was still stuck on that guy. I told y'all I had a soul tie with. I was still stuck on him. And something just I was battling something in my mind about this guy. And I was just like, you know what? I think I love this guy. And as soon as I said that, I, I saw this bird in the sky. And I kept my eyes on it. And then this bird flew right towards me. And it disappeared. But the way it flew towards me, when it flew towards me, it made me do this. And I just was like, whoa. Like, I felt like something had hit me when this bird flew towards me. Now, do I know what happened? I really don't know. I really don't know. Because you got to think about it. At this point in time, when I said that about this person and that bird flew towards me like that, I'm thinking, oh, like that may have been when I when the soul tie happened. That that may have been when the soul tie happened. I don't know because it had already felt like that when we had sex. But when that happened, that's when I really really felt like something spiritual happened. And looking back on it, it was definitely demonic. Definitely, um, because when it hit me like that, first off, I was scared. And I had went inside my porch. I had a screen door. And I went inside there to get my phone because something told me, oh, go text him. But when that happened, something told me, go text him. And it's so crazy. Like I told y'all, when I would smoke and, that, and something would come up behind me and make this noise, it made me feel like it was pushing me to text this person. 
So I feel like this person who I was so attached to, that was, it was like, that was the devil's puppet. Ugh. Mmm. It's like, that's a way the devil kept me entangled. Guys. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. Because, well, I tell you, I was stuck on this person. Like, I was stuck. When that bird flew towards me and I went back, I got my phone. Oh, man. I went and got my phone. I was about to text this guy. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I ain't going to text him. I'm going to, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go outside. I'm going to pick up my stuff because I was painting. I was outside drawing and painting. When I tried to go out the door to get my drawing, I heard the most evil noises outside of the door it was like i opened the door and i just heard the most ghoulish sound oh it it's like every experience i've had where i've heard something demonic it just makes my it just it makes me it just makes me sick it's like the devil wasn't going to let me not go back to that person. That's what happened. So when I opened that door and I heard that noise, it scared me enough for me not to want to go back out there and to go ahead and text him. It's like everything is making sense now. Okay. After that, I get back in touch with this person. Go have sex with him again. But... After that, things ended. It ended. It ended. Um, and so, at that point, I was depressed. I was depressed. And um, at that point, I was relying on my spirit guides. I was meditating and, and stuff like that. Still doing it. I had my tarot deck at this point. So I started using tarot to get me through my days, tell me what I should do and stuff like that. Fast forward, COVID hits, I get thrown out. Um, I get thrown out of school, you know, at the time and I go back to live with my mother. And um, that's when life really hit me. So, well, to make a long story short, I had to leave my mother's house. I was homeless. And this is when I made these videos. I'll probably show clips. I don't know what I'm going to do. There were some videos I posted around the time when I got thrown out of my house. And um, I have them. But the reason they're not posted anymore is because... Um, I didn't have Christ in my life. When Christ came back into my life, I got rid of everything that I thought was truth because it wasn't truth. Jesus was with me this entire time. He was with me this entire time. He knew exactly how this was going to go. He knew exactly that I was going to fall into this and this person was going to lead me to this and this person was bad for me. He knew this, but he let me go through it so that today I can tell the story and I can understand why everything happened the way it did. So, yes, ended up finding somewhere to live. And I'm still doing my my new age stuff. The crystals, the tarot cards, um, meditating, yoga, um, believing it. I mean, looking up angel. I was looking up angel numbers every day. Um, just whatever would keep me in confirmation that I was doing what I needed to do. So, this is the night that Jesus convicted me. So, I went to a cousin's house and we were all sitting together. Now, be mindful at this time. I had an altar, a demonic altar. I actually had an altar right over there on top of that dresser. 
I had the picture I drew of those birds. I had that right there. I had my crystals right there. I had pictures of my dead loved ones because I felt like they were my spirit guides talking to me, visiting me through birds, sending me messages. I would try and channel them, you know. I had all that placed up there. And um, before I got convicted, something started to change because I started wanting to pray. I started praying. God was doing things in my life right before I got convicted to show me that he was the way. Because I hadn't prayed in a while. But for some reason, I started praying. So, um, I was hanging with some cousins. And I remember that my cousin, um, I remember that my cousin mentioned that they knew someone who was into new age stuff. And be mindful, I never opened up about my new age things with my family, but I did have an altar up there. And I guess the family member I was living with had told my family about it. And my cousin ended up saying something like, Oh, well, you know, Rachel does so-and-so. And at that moment, I was like, that is like, for her to have said something at that moment, it stopped me right there. This entire time, I felt comfortable with what I was doing, but not until she said something, it made me like, hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's like, I didn't like the way she said it. Now, just imagine if it was something that I, I genuinely, truly felt was okay to do. I wouldn't have felt bad about her saying it, you know, or saying, oh, Rachel does that. I would have been like, yeah, so. But no, I felt convicted in my spirit. So I was like, I was kind of irritated because I was like, well, y'all been gossiping about me. <laughs> but that didn't overpower the feeling of feeling like is what I'm doing right. So after that night, I was so high that night that I made the wrong turn, headed back home. I made the wrong turn and it was down this long road. And as I was going down this long road, I looked, something made me look on the right of me and I saw a graveyard. And I saw this graveyard and then I looked up again and I saw a sign of the Grim Reaper. I'm high now. I'm paranoid. I'm worried. So I'm just like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden I hear voices coming out of the radio demonic voices channeling through the radio. Instantly, I felt like I was gonna die. You remember when I said, when I took LSD and I saw those demons and it made me feel like I was gonna die when I saw them? It was the same feeling when I heard the voices. And I was looking at the road, I said something. I said, this car is about to go in this ditch and I'm about to die. But then on the other end of me, something just said, turn around. Jesus said, turn around. Focus on turning around. I had demons in my ear telling me I was going to die because of all the stuff I had done. It was to a point where I was worshiping nature. I was bowing to the sun. 
All of it just made sense when I saw that graveyard. All of it made sense. I was like, I'm about to die for everything I've been doing. But Jesus said, turn around. I found somewhere to turn around. And on the way back, I'm just thinking, what am I going to do? I made it home. I looked at that altar. I took all of it off, put it in a bag. And whoever I, I know who I talked to, but the person I talked to that night, there was a picture they sent me and it had Psalms 91 on it. And when I looked up that Psalm and I read it, I knew Jesus was calling me back home. I knew Jesus right then and there was telling me, come back home. Let me protect you. Let me, let me wrap you with my feathers. Let me save you from the traps. Let me cover you with my blood. Let me take you in. Let me save your soul. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus spoke to me that night and saved me. The next night when I was going to sleep, I was laying in my bed and something just told me to confess. To confess everything I did give him with all my worries and my fears. And I remember laying in the bed, just screaming out to him, I need you, God. I need you. Please forgive me, God. Save me, Jesus. Just, just pouring out my lost heart, soul, everything. I gave it all to him. And I'll never forget, something just came over me. Something, I was in the dark. Something came over me and I just felt power. I got up, I started walking around the room, declaring his name, proclaiming his name, speaking against the devil, rebuking Satan. I mean, his power consumed this room. After that, I started getting back on track. I started fasting. I got in touch with some girls who um, went through the same thing I went through. Um, it's just like my life changed. My life changed. I threw everything out. Now I look back at it, I should have burnt it. <laughs> but I know um, at that time, throwing it out, getting it out the house was my only concern. And I know that God was just happy that I did that. And I know that he will close any portals that I opened um, by the grace of him, by his power, his almighty power. I know it's done. And um, I just, I just went through a lot. I just turned 21. And being 20 years old taught me a lot of things spiritually and why it is so important to know who God is, to let Jesus protect you, to not let this world feed you lies, to not let these people out here allow these people in your in your body. Your, your body belongs to Christ. And if you let anything contaminate it, pollute it, distort it, um, you're gonna be lost. You're going to be lost. You're going to be driven into spiritual darkness. Satan is out here prowling like a, ro a roaring lion, devouring whoever he can. Please don't let it be you. Jesus had mercy on my soul. Jesus saved me. I Still to this day, I could have been lost. But Jesus didn't give up on me. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. 
And I just feel like, cause I'm not one to tell stories. I honestly feel like my voice is just not a voice that people like to hear. But despite my doubts, my worries, my concerns, I do feel called to share this video today and give you my testimony. Please do not follow witchcraft. Do not follow new age. Don't follow idols. There is only one true God, only one true living God, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, say it with me now, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the truth, Jesus Christ is the way, Jesus Christ is the life, Jesus is our Lord, he is our Lord, he is our Lord and Savior, he is the one who can bring you salvation, he is the one who can save you from your sins, he is the one who can save you from darkness, he is the one who will give you light to see the truth, you have to be open to it. Do not let people come in your life and pollute you. Don't let people come in your life and dim your light to the point where there's none left. God saved me by his grace and mercy. If he can save me, he can definitely save you. But it takes for you to open your heart to him. Please don't give up on Jesus. He will never give up on you. He is waiting for you to go back. He is waiting for you with open arms for you to say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, take me. Jesus, forgive me. And he's going to forgive you. He's going to take you in. He's going to nurture you. He's going to build you up. He's going to build your character back up. He's going to forget what you've done, Lord. Oh. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. He is going to come back and he's going to save you, but you have to be open to it. Jesus is here. Jesus is here with you. Jesus is speaking through me to you to tell you it is not too late. Please come back. He loves you. He loves you. He has a purpose for you. He has a very divine purpose for you. He wants you to serve him. He wants you to honor him. He wants you to love him. He wants you to have faith in him. Please do not give up on Lord. Please do not go following idols. Please do not go following following other people's gods. Please do not go following other people's theologies, religions. No, religion is man-made. The only thing out here that is true for you to follow is the Christ, is the Christ our Lord and Savior. It is having a relationship with him. It does not matter what people say you got to do to be this and that. If it is not of Christ, you don't need to be of it, point blank, period. I don't care what you call Christ. There is only one true living God, and that is Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Please listen to what I'm saying right now. Please go get saved. Please get saved. Please, please, please get saved. Please go get saved. Please talk to God. Please get in his word. Please Build a foundation with him because I don't want you to be lost like me and have to literally have to be in the presence of darkness because you have no type of protection, because you've given away your right as a child of God to always be protected by his truth. <sighs> Y'all, please, if my testimony can't touch you, I pray someone else's testimony can. I know I'm not the best storyteller, but please, please, please listen to what I'm saying. Please, I cannot stress it enough. Please let God come into your life and transform you. Because this world is only going to transform you into a grave. That's it. Don't let it. Don't let it. Do not let it. God loves you. There is no sin. There is no there is no angel or demon. There is no heaven or hell. There there's nothing that can separate you from the from from the love that God has for you. So don't ever feel like he he's going to forsake you, abandon you if you come to him looking for wisdom and understanding please go to him no matter how hard your life is right now he's there he's waiting for you please go please do it don't turn back 
I'm sorry. I wish I had better words to say, guys, but I just know he wanted me to share this story with you guys. My legs is like hurting now, but I just wanted to share this story with you guys because I haven't spoke about it and I feel like today is the day. I'm not even going to edit it. I'm not about to try and make it all pretty. I'm just going to post it and I pray that I, I shared enough. Um, I actually plan on releasing more videos um, exposing witchcraft exposing tarot cards exposing crystals exposing it all everything of new age i want to get as many people as i can who has drifted off into this blindness um to come back and see the light because um god will be back pretty soon jesus is returning and he's going to take all his children back with them and if you are not saved if you have not rededicated your life to him and, and giving your life to him i don't know how else um you think you're gonna be besides dead and in and, and terror you know so i will come up with that um i will share a lot more content i just feel like god is calling his children right now to really start setting in the the kingdom um work and so um, yes, but God bless you. If you've watched this entire video, thank you for watching. Thank you for hearing my story. I pray that it touched your heart, it touched your life. And um, I just want to do a prayer for the ones who are lost right now, who was led to this video. I just want to pray right quick. Father God, thank you so much for allowing me to share this story today lord god i pray that everything that i said will touch someone's heart allow them to see the light and allow them to see that you are the truth in the way father god lord god i ask that whoever is watching this video who knew who need to be saved lord god who need to be reborn in you lord god who needs to be baptized in your holy spirit and in your fire father god i ask that you will touch their lives that you that you will come over them father god that you will wash them clean lord god with your blood that you will do all that you can to reveal that reveal to them the truth in the way and the path that they need to take lord god to be accepted in you lord god so that they can accept you in their hearts and their lives and their spirits father god for your holy spirit guides us to the truth in the way lord god i pray that you will nourish them with the wisdom and understanding that they need to get through it father god thank you so much for bringing us together father and i pray that whoever is bowing their heads who is coming into this prayer father god that you will bless them lord god please bless them from whatever they have come from that you will forgive them and allow them repentance for their sins father and i ask that you will continue to open their eyes open their hearts open their minds so they can be transformed by you and only you jesus for you have the power for you have the authority you for you deserve all the praise and the honor father god and we thank you in this very moment in jesus name i pray and thank you father god amen so yes y'all thank y'all for watching this video i pray that this video blessed you guys and you know comment whatever you need you know if you need if you need help getting back on track leave your comments but i hope this testimony was a blessing to you guys so y'all have a wonderful day